Dad, poor family. This is Coach Grumman here with my son, Grumman. Discussing the importance of power series exercises that we can use to, to increase our force output and maximum power. Uh, we've already been working on the foundation of strength, building up our strength ratios. Um, when we start looking at power and systems, we want to make sure that we have the strength to provide the Look at what we need to have for your basic plyometric work. One to one point five of lower body power ratio. These are squatting one and a half times your weight. For elite level athletes, we want two. And actually, Griffin has just worked up to two times his body weight on a squat. So we're going to show some of these force development exercises that you can use, uh, given on your very uh, various equipment needs and, 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 and that you have at home to continue your force output and your drive to better performance. So one of the best exercises, I believe, one of the most simple exercises you can do to increase your force output without having uh, a lot of equipment around would be sprints. Basic, hard, forced out sprints to make sure that you can get that force output. It's going to be maximum muscle contraction. It's going to be increasing the heart rate using all your muscles and a kinetic link exercise that's going to give you greater force output. So for the sprint, I marked out 40 yards that Young Griffin here is going to give all out effort. Starting from a three-point stance, every step, making sure that that drive is increased and forced out harder. All right, so give you a three-point stance, Griffin. All right, so you go. You're going to give it all you can, pumping those arms. Again, we utilize a short stretch speed system. Every step is going to produce more force. Sit. Hey! Good. And if we look at the time, that was roughly between five to ten seconds. We're going to give him about 30 seconds off to get him recovered. We're going to do it again. And you can do the reps anywhere between 5 to 15 times to make sure that we're working the body and increasing that force development. Set. Now we're back in the True Grit Garage Gymnasium. Uh, we're going to be hitting our second exercise in the progression for force development, power output. Um, and it's anything to do with, with high force development jumps. You can do box jumps, you can do broad jumps. But again, you're getting that stretch, short stretch cycle going on, eccentric load, force development. Again, it is very, very important to have those strength ratios intact before doing this. Because every time you make that force, you're coming down and catching the load of your body and it's putting that compression on those muscles again, which if we're not strong, it's going to pull muscles in and overcompensate in different areas, causing injury. So again, we're going to have Griffin show you the basic box jump using this big tire that we've had dropped off at the facility to make sure that we can get force output for, for young athletes. Pause, eccentric load, hips back, tight core. We're going to drive to the ground, making sure we get the propulsion needed for clear the distance. Good. Step down. Do two more reps. Down low. I want to hear your Let's go. Up. Catch. Perfect. Step down. And again, we have our younger, younger athletes stepping down to avoid that compression on their joints. In a safer way, we can hit, again, anywhere between three reps to ten reps. All right? This is a power exercise, so we aren't doing it to fatigue. We want to make sure that we get recovery and get more output with every jump, right? So recovery and these exercises are important. Now we're on to our final exercise in the force development uh, series. And if again, if you're lucky enough to have equipment, barbells, and bumper plates, this is a great movement. Now, when we are doing power series exercises for that force development, I, I talked about the seriousness of having that strength ratio set, and it, it's equally if not more implied for this movement as well. You want to make sure you have that strength before we've set in to do these power movements or it can start affecting the, the uh, ligament structure in, in your joints and it'll start making it more hard and increasing injuries that come in. We see a lot of athletes that forget about the foundations of strength and they go right to power series exercises and, and they have a hard time with, with injuries in the college setting. So again, we have Griffin here. We're gonna go through the movements of this hang clean for a force development movement. Before we set up, we wanna make sure that we step into the bar. 
right? We want to make, hold on a second, Griffin. We want to make sure that our feet are directly under our hip, just like we transfer onto our sprints. We don't run wide-footed. We don't do power series exercises wide-footed. So it stays right underneath our hips, right? We then squat down to the bar. We tighten and activate our lats before the pull, which means an inward rotation of those elbows. We pull the weight. Good. Now what we do is we get in this hang position, we go into eccentric low. When we go to eccentric low, that is the base of the amortization phase, where we get a greater force output. So Griffin gets those hips back, elbows in, straight, nice tight chest, looking forward. Now to hit this movement, I drive hard to the floor to a pull and catch on knee. Ready, Griffin? Hard push. Nice catch. Give me one more rep. Let's see it. Drop those hips back. Drop! Nice. Go ahead and drop that weight. Okay. Griffin here has been working on his strength ratios. He can squat easily two times his body weight. He can deadlift 1.75 of his body weight. He's been working with me through progressive steps and movements for the last three years. I would never have any athlete just coming in without knowing that history and doing a power series exercise. Right? You build that foundation first, and then you go to force output. For all of our athletes, we need to make sure that you are transferable because strength is just one X, one element of performance. We need to make sure that you get the power output and the force development to transfer it to sport. So again, depending on what you have around you, you can still increase that force output by doing sprints, by doing plyometric jumps or into the hand clean. All right, so do not hesitate and do not hold back on these. Because as you enter back in, it's going to be important that you are ready to play.